Hey, Channel 9, as we speak, big announcements are being made at Mobile World Congress regarding Windows Phone. Uh, and standing with me are two guys you're going to get to know very well in Channel 9's ongoing coverage uh, of all the announcements uh, from now for, through Mix to the release date. Uh, this is Joe Belfiore and Charlie Kendall. Uh, Charlie, why don't you describe what your role will be here? So I'm responsible for the app platform and developer experience for Windows Phone 7. Okay. And uh, um, I'm going to be over the next six, nine months, year. We're um, going to get to know you time. really well. Right. We're going to have a bunch of videos with you coming up. Um, but today, Joe, you're going to give us a demo. Describe what your role is with Windows Phone. Uh, I run the program management team that does the design and the spec for the product. And you, you actually came from Zune, correct? So you've got a, a long history in yeah. sort of leading design yeah, experience. Yeah, well, I, I worked on Zune before that, Media Center, before that Windows. <laughs> uh, so I've done a lot of so UI stuff at Microsoft. Well, I, I, I try. OK. <laughs> All right, Joe, there's been a lot of news in the press, a lot of rumors milling about. I want to hear it right from the source. Let's set the record straight. What's different with this release? Um, well, I think the main thing that's different is the team has changed its mentality and attitude about who we're really focused on when we build it. Okay. And in the past, you know, when you think about Windows Mobile, um, I think the team was focused on trying to build a great platform for third parties to build lots and lots of different products, really with more of a business end user in mind. Mm -hmm. With Windows Phone 7 series, we've totally changed our approach. We're really, really focused on end users. Okay. And not just business users, like regular people who have full lives. They want to be entertained. <laughs> they want to get some work done. So does that mean like a lot of apps? It means a lot of things. It okay. means that uh, one of the things we've done is work closely with the hardware companies to make sure that the hardware is all really great. Yeah. We have this hardware spec that requires things like a GPS and requires a touch screen and requires a big screen. Keyboards are optional. So the min bar is rather high then. The min bar is quite high. Excellent. And the idea is we want the Windows Phone brand to really mean a great experience. So you walk into a store and say, well, I'm not sure which phone I want, but I want a Windows phone. And that's going to mean a great hardware experience. It's going to mean a ton of killer apps. Yeah. And it's going to mean a lot of stuff that's built in, ranging from Zune for music and video to Xbox for games to Outlook and Word and Excel. So you get a really complete, excellent experience. Yeah, I mean, I've noticed it's got a very Zune-like interface. Well, there are definitely things in the phone that are Zune-like. But the way we like to think of it, there's a, a new visual design we codename Metro. Okay. And Metro actually has its roots in Windows, actually. Uh, Media Center on Windows was the first place that we did this typographically intense high motion UI. Yeah. Then it moved to Zune. The, the recent Xbox dashboard has a little hint of Metro in it. Okay. And now you'll see it on Windows Phone. We want all those products to feel like a family, um, to be not just useful, but also really fun. Very cool. Very cool. All right, let's take a look. All right. All right, Joe, so what you've got here is a prototype, right, for the Windows Phone 7 series that will be coming out later this year? That's right. And there will be hardware from a lot of different manufacturers, but the prototype I have here is a good example of what the hardware will, will, will be like. But this is this is the software. This is Windows Phone 7 series That's right. operating system. That's right. right. So well, let's walk through it. So what you see here, this is the, the lock screen. And down below, you see our three main hardware buttons, uh -huh. Start, Search, and Back. Um, and we're designing the UI to really go with those. The UI is also entirely designed for touch. We require capacitive touch, so you have really nice, smooth touch. You saw me just unlock the phone there. Yep. And what we're looking at here is the Start menu. And so I'm going to pan up and down. You see these are called tiles. And these tiles give me up-to-date information about all the things I care most about. So obviously, I can get to my phone. I can get to all the people that I care about. We'll talk about that later. I can send texts, email. My calendar shows me detail about where I'm supposed to go. Mm -hmm. And if you look farther down, you can see I've customize this one a little bit. I have, that's the me tile. That's my actual Facebook profile. And that's my wife, Christina. That's her yeah. actual Facebook profile photo. And these animate so that you get real live data coming from those people. This is the games hub featuring Xbox Live, the pictures hub, music and video hub, and those are customized to show people and things that I care about. Um, but let's start by looking at the browser. I'm going to jump to favorites and okay. choose Amazon.com. Mm -hmm. And so now we're going out to the web. We're on the cell network here. And you can watch the page load and render. So you get really great uh, web page compatibility. Um, and because we support capacitive touch, of course it. we support all these kinds of features that users are expecting today, like pinch zoom, double tap to zoom in. And one of the things I want to show, too, if I zoom in really close here, you see 
The letters look very nice. Mm -hmm. That is sub-pixel positioning for text in HTML, one of the things that makes text really readable on this very large, beautiful uh, WVGA screen. It's very high resolution, higher resolution than what you're seeing on most phones today. I can click a link, navigate into a page, you get the idea. Yeah. The, the browser works the way you'd expect. And there are some really neat features in the browser on the phone as well. We recognize phone numbers and addresses in any HTML, and they become touchable. So you can touch a phone number, and it'll help you oh, dial really? a phone. You can touch an address, and it'll take you somewhere on the map. Um, I can hit the tab button, and you'll see here the browser supports multiple tabs. So it's easy for me to Excellent. have one page loading Excellent. in the background while I'm reading another. Uh, those kinds of scenarios make you more efficient when you're using the phone. That gives you a quick look at the browser. Um, let's move on. I'm going to I'm gonna, I'm gonna jump back to the Start menu, and uh, let's talk about some communication scenarios. Okay. So for example, um, I mentioned this people tab. Yeah. When you think about communicating, there's so many different ways that people communicate today. They might text, they might phone call, they might email, or they might social network. And we've tried to pull together all the people that you care about in one place called the People Hub. So when I navigate here, you'll see the first thing it shows is people that I've been communicating with recently. And I can pan over. Um, and I see here's all of my people. And what this is doing is aggregating your Exchange contacts, your Gmail contacts, your wow. Facebook friends all together. This is actually, I have 600 plus friends on Facebook, and you see these are them with their photos and so on. And then over here on the far right is the What's New feed. Mm -hmm. And that's information about all your people coming from all your social networks. So these are my real Facebook friends and what they're up to right now. Um, I can click the plus to comment and so on. Um, and the idea of the People Hub and all these other hubs is to bring together all the relevant stuff about a particular topic. Yeah. In the case of people, it's sourcing from lots of different services and giving you social networking. In the case of photos or music, it's third-party apps, people, what they're up to. Um, one other thing that's kind of cool that we've tried to do, I mentioned the buttons in hardware, is the search button. When I'm in people and I press search, search gives me a fast and easy way to filter my people list. So if I type a W, it's going to filter down to all the people whose last names start with W, and I can choose somebody from the list. Mm -hmm. It's fast and easy. Um, the idea of search being contextual doesn't apply just to people but to other places as well. If I come back to the Start menu and hit Search, Search optimizes around being a web search because there's right. a ton of things that people want to do with their phone device while they're out and about. They want to look up a phone number. They want to look up a uh, place to eat and so on. So here I am on my phone. Um, the phone recognizes that I'm in Redmond. And Search tries to be contextual and decide, based on your query, whether it should give you a local result or a web result. Perfect. I typed pizza. I get a map. I get results for pizza that's near me. You can see there's that's a great. Pizza Hut 0.83 miles away. Um, if I want to get more information about this, I can touch it. Um, Bing is providing all this detail. I can see um, directions. I can get the phone number. I could jump to their website. I could pan over and read reviews. Excellent. You know, you've heard about Bing as a decision engine. The Bing team is aggregating together data from lots of different sources to help people make decisions. Restaurant reviews are a good example. Some of this great. data does comes from Yelp. Does it have similar Yelp. functionality for movies? It does, it actually. Where you are. Absolutely, it does. And one of the other nice things you can do is hit nearby, and it'll show you parking, ATMs, gas stations, things that are near the place that you just did a search on. In fact, you asked about movies, so let's try, a, let's try an example. Um, there are a bunch of data types that the Bing engine. I was going to say Avatar. The Bing engine <laughs> tries to be smart about. Movies are one example where it gives you an instant answer. Really prevent people from having to type a lot. When I type Avatar, it knows my location. That's great. And it tells me the actual theaters and times for me to go see Avatar right now. Yeah, so it knew you were talking about a movie. It could have very well brought up an Xbox Live Avatar page. That's right. For your, That's your, right. your, your it, gaming icon. It figured icon. it out. That's and here's, right. here's another interesting example. Smart. You see, in this case, it picked web by default but it could have picked local. Uh -huh. I don't know if there's any local businesses near here called Avatar. Look, there are. If I pivot over to local, there they are, <laughs> and I can find my way on the map and so on. So that's search. Uh, let's talk a little bit more about communications. Um, I mentioned email. There's a very full, complete implementation. But what I can do is jump to email, and you'll see here, um, this is an Exchange email account. We support Exchange, but also Hotmail Windows Live, Gmail, mm -hmm. Yahoo, all the popular mail formats, and it's really easy to set up. I can pivot between messages and look at just my unread. 
I can look at messages that I have flagged. I can look at messages that are urgent. Uh, but in general, the performance is really good, and our implementation of Active Sync works against a local cache, so it's always very responsive. Mm -hmm. You can delete messages, you can open messages, and you never see an annoying loading, loading, loading. This is the this is your inbox, and okay. I was looking at all mail, and what I'm using is this strip across the top for pivoting. Very clear. It's gotcha. a way to filter, so that's all unread flags. and and urgent mail. And you'll see this UI metaphor is used throughout the application experiences on the phone. The same idea happens in Zune, the same idea happens in Calendar and so on. So can you use the, the hardware search button within Exchange as well? You can. If you push search while you're in email, yep. it brings up the same box and lets you filter so you can find email Great. by sender or subject or whatever. Great. Let's flip over here. Um, I'll give you another sort of communications example. I'll jump into text. We support SMS and MMS messaging. So yep. if I wanted to embed a photo in this, conversation I could. Um, someone sends me a photo, it'll show up. And I think you asked me about whether the devices would have keyboards. Yeah, well, some will. I like a keyboard. And one of the key scenarios for slide out keyboard for slide out keyboards is being able to do texting. So you'll see there when I rotate, we detect yeah. the rotation, your text conversation reflows, um, and you can do it in either vertical orientation or horizontal. And watch these two little buttons over here. These are not finished, it's still sort of developer art, but when I rotate it, Watch how the word and the oh, icon that's changes. Oh, cute. Yeah, we're trying to pay attention to those <laughs> details and really make sure the user experience stays delightful and fun for well, people. Rotation. Um, let's take a look at the calendar, um, sort of another productivity uh, sort of example. You're um, a busy guy. Yeah, I've put a lot of stuff on here, and you see the red and the blue. Mm -hmm. A big theme for us is enabling the phone to work both for your work life and for your personal life. So like an email, we support your Gmail, Yahoo, mm -hmm. Hotmail, or Exchange account. Same is true in calendar. I can have a personal calendar merged with my Exchange calendar, and here in the, the day view, you see a different color for each of those. I can switch over to agenda view, where I get uh, these items in a list. Or I can use down here on the app bar, uh, I'll touch the month uh, command, which shows oh, wow. me the calendar in a month orientation. So if I want to jump out to February 28th and see what's going on, I can do that. Very cool. Um, and you might have noticed, again, the pivots at the top and down at the bottom, we call this the app bar. Um, it's like a fancy toolbar designed for the phone, where the most common commands go on the top, so it's easy for people to learn, but you can always touch it or pull it up to find out enhanced commands. Mm -hmm. um, so that saves people from having to hunt and look all over the different parts of the UI to find their commands. Now, how is this syncing with your Outlook calendar? Are, are you still using ActiveSync? We use the ActiveSync protocol. Sync happens in the background. It's mm -hmm. push notification. So the phone uh, automatically will stay up to date with any changes in your contacts, your calendar, right. your email for multiple uh, providers. And more and more of them are starting to use Exchange ActiveSync. So it's a, really a great way to stay very up to date. Okay, we'll come back here to the start menu. Um, now, is this customizable? I know you, you showed me how you could move the tiles around. What about colors or shapes? Um, actually, you can. Uh, the, the blue color that you're seeing here is called the accent color. Okay. And you can specify that as an end user. And the other thing that you can change, you might have noticed that email was black text on a white background. Mm -hmm. We're implementing both light on dark as well as dark on light. Some of the devices that we'll ship will have OLED displays that are better with a black background. Yep. Um, they look really crisp and sharp, and it saves battery life. Some of them will have LCDs. At the end of the day, if you buy the phone, you get to pick the color scheme. That's what I like. Yeah. Um, so let's scroll down and take a look at uh, some of the more fun sort of feature areas. Okay. We'll start with pictures. I'm going to jump into the pictures hub here. Um, and you'll see, uh, you saw the, those two really cute little girls there. Those, yes. are, those are my twin daughters. And you see again, here they are in the background of the Pictures Hub. Oh, wow. And that customization happens automatically. You don't have to do any work. You can sync pictures from your PC. You can take them from the camera. And we automatically choose from the list of your favorite pictures. So it's just like a background. custom wallpaper, huh? That's right. Great. So there are a number of different parts to the Pictures Hub here. Um, this is the gallery, which lets you browse all the pictures on your device. Here's the mosaic, which is recent or favorite pictures, so you can jump in and show someone a slideshow. And this is the What's New feed. Again, we're really trying to integrate social networking. And what this is, so these are... So that comes up in your picture gallery, huh? That's right. Interesting. Um, uh, we've tried to take Facebook and Windows Live and all the social networks that Windows Live aggregates and build them right into the core experiences. Yeah. One of the, the main ideas of uh, 7 Series Windows phones is that these hubs bring together what your people are doing, third-party applications, um, your data, all in one place. So when I go into pictures, the feed here is showing me all of the photo activity that my friends have. So if my friends have posted photos, I can tell and jump there and look at the photos they've posted. 
That's great. But that's not the only way that we've actually integrated some social networking features into pictures. Let me jump in here to the album view. Um, you see this first album is the camera roll. Mm -hmm. That's if I use the camera on the phone to take a bunch of pictures, they go there. I haven't taken any. That's why it's black. So it sort of organizes your photos for you in like folders. That's right. In fact, right. that's what the rest of these are. Um, these are photos that I synced from my PC. In fact, this is a folder hierarchy. So when I jump in, you'll see there's a folder of pictures called Chelan Trip. Here's a folder of pictures called Kids in Action and a bunch of pictures that are in this folder right here. Those photos synced from my PC using the Zune software that syncs photos and music exactly mm -hmm. the way it syncs Zunes today. But the other thing we do down here, and we're not quite finished polishing this up yet, um, you see all of these albums are coming from Facebook. Mm -hmm. So I added my Facebook account one time. I only had to do this once. And then when I go to pictures, in keeping with this theme of aggregating everything together, we pull down your Facebook albums, your Windows Live albums, and you can browse wow. right into them. So if you look here, this is my album called The Twins on Facebook. So this Facebook. is all the pictures that you posted to Facebook Exactly, right here. exactly. Great. And the truth is, my twins are now two and a half years old. So these pictures are like two plus years old. And I didn't have to do any work. I'd forgotten I'd posted them. And I run into people, and they say to me, how are the twins? I can right. pull my phone out and pull up pictures. So here's a, this is a, my daughter, Sydney, with her older brother. And you can see the comments are displayed. I can pan from picture to picture. You see the picture displayed, and then the comments pop in. This is one of my favorite photos. It makes it super easy. You can deal with the photos that are up in the it's cloud. Great. So you're just permanently logged into Facebook. I exactly. It's great. And the really nice thing is that I didn't have to do any work at all. Yes. I signed signed in once and all of my Windows Live content, all my Facebook content immediately and instantly available on the phone. Awesome. So that's pictures. Um, Cute kids, by the way. Thank you. So we start out in the Music and Video Hub and you see this is the Zune area where I could go into my collection. If I pan to the right, you see the history. So uh, the last band I played was Maroon 5, and before that, Jack Johnson. And I can pan to the right, and these are this is the content that is new since the last time I synced. I synced a, a playlist and a video. But what I'm going to do is move over here to the Zune area, and I'll show you how the Zune experience looks on the phone. I clicked Music, and here's a list of all my artists. So if I want to play, let's play some Ben Folds. I'll just touch the play icon next to Ben Folds, and Ben Folds will start. I don't know if you can hear this, but yeah. There it is. Um, and in the background, we've loaded a Ben Folds photo from the service. So we've started that automatic customization for you. And I'm going to pause this. Now I'm going to go back. Um, another thing that's kind of cool, if I go into the Ben Folds page. I mean, it's practically like you're holding a Zoom. It's, uh, you, you, really <laughs> you really do are. have the whole experience of Zoom built in. Um, uh, you'll, and in fact, this is one of the nice features of Zoom HD I'm about to show right here. Um, in my, my collection, I have these two Ben Folds albums. But if I decide I really like Ben Folds and want to find out what else he has, I can touch down here to expand the marketplace, querying the service now, and here's all of the other Ben Folds albums that are available on the Zune awesome. service. Now, the really cool thing, if I'm a Zune subscriber, I don't have to pay per track, so I can just touch one of these and start playing it. Right. The phone is connected, the service is connected, we're cloud aware, um, and so if you're a subscriber, it's like having an infinite library of music to be playing from your device without doing any work. That's great. Um, of course, the Zune experience supports music, but also video, podcasts, and so on. And you can get to the marketplace and browse through the marketplace to find additional content and, and download it right to your device. So uh, one other thing that's pretty cool about the social networking capability yep. of the phone um, is people wanting to update what they are doing for other people. So uh, by default, we put the me tile on the start menu here. And that's, as I said, my default Facebook image. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm going to touch that and jump into the me card where I can set my own what's new. And part of the reason I want to show so you, you this... update your status. Exactly, exactly. So I'm going to update my status just on Facebook and um, I'm just going to type as fast as I possibly can. I'm going to make a ton of errors. Okay. I'm going to do that on purpose because it's <laughs> difficult to type on a phone. Okay. Um, what should my status be? Now this is real, so what should um, it really be? <laughs> shooting an interview with Laura Foy. Okay, here we go. I'm going to go as fast as I can. OK. Shooting an interview with Laura Foy, period. OK. <laughs> so pretty close. Pretty close. It got the ab wrong, or the an wrong. Now. It got interviewed, though, because it got interview, that's right? not how you it spelled got, it. It got interviewed. OK, well, so <laughs> autocorrection was going. But here's the really cool thing. Yeah. Autocorrection can be very good, as you see, but it's, it's really never 100%. So what we've done is we let you go back and correct. So I can touch A, B. Oh, I'll change that to N. And I'm done. And here, now it's not going to know your last name, so I'll retype that. Whoops, not doy, but foy, period. And even better, 
if you're going to publish to Facebook, you got to put a little character in there. We include the emoticon oh, keyboard I love layout. The emoticons. So I'll give a little wink here on this one and we'll click post. And now Very cool. my Facebook profile is automatically updated. Now, what was there some of the, the reasoning behind such heavy incorporation of Facebook rather than making it a separate app like other, you know, phones out there have? Well, thematically, really one of the things that we've tried to do in the new design of Windows 7 series phones is simplify it by bringing together all this complexity of stuff that's out there on the internet. Yeah. If you think about the way people use PCs, and, and truthfully the way a lot of smartphone UIs have evolved, um, it's about separate apps. You've got your browser, it's a thing you live in. You've got a website, is a thing you live right, in. Right, and you have to close one to exactly. open another. It's, exactly. it's cumbersome. So what we tried to do was pick the top tasks, so people, photos, yeah. music and video, and create in each of those a hub which pulls in interesting stuff on the web, third-party applications, the mm -hmm. content on your device, and the actions of people that you care about so that you have a one-stop shop. It makes it simpler for people. Um, you know, if I'm going to deal with photos on my PC, it doesn't bother me so much to switch between apps. Mm -hmm. But on a phone with a small screen, we want you to have one place that you can go and see all those things brought together. And that's why we focused a lot on integrating social networks. We work yeah. closely with Facebook and with Windows Live. And so you get not just those two, but also all of the social networks that connect to Windows Live. And that's quite a few. Very Twitter, cool. Flickr, all those things work sort of natively in the phone. And by the way, there's lots of great functionality that can be added in third-party applications too. I'm sure, But yeah. we wanted a really natural way for people to do those things by default. Well, I'm happy that you did. Now, I know you're not quite ready to show it yet, but can you speak to the gaming experience? Because there is Xbox yeah, Live Yeah, absolutely. Um, we're going to talk more about the exact specifics of all the third-party applications at Mix. That's so, right. So stay so tuned. Register for Mix, March um, 15th through 17th. Uh, uh, but what we are doing is we're building in a games hub, and the games hub will feature Xbox Live. It'll have other third-party games as well, but uh, it's going to focus on Xbox Live and letting the phone create for you a great social gaming experience. So you can connect with your friends and play games with them interactively, not awesome. just on the phone device, but on other devices too, the PC and so on. Um, and also let you sort of boost your standing within the Xbox Live community, earn gamer score, right. um, earn achievements, all those sorts of things. Very important. Well, thank you very much. This is very exciting. Um, as we just said, you guys want to sign up and register for Mix, and stay tuned to Channel 9 because we're going to be covering, uh, we're going to have a ton of videos covering Windows Phone, and uh, hopefully all the way up until you get them in your hands, of your very own. Thank you, Joe. Thank you very much. Thanks very much.